At other times, they just called him Adonai, you know, you're the Lord or whatever. But he has now revealed himself to this person. Hi, Diane. And, uh, okay, so go ahead, please. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as sojourners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I remembered my covenant. So therefore, to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will give you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm, Okay, he's once again, he said, I'm being faithful to my covenant. I'm being faithful to these people that were before you. There's going to be people coming after you. I am the eternal God, and these are the things that I am going to do, and here is how I'm going to do it, and here is the purpose. He just revealed all of that in the last couple verses. Really fantastic. Okay, go ahead. Where are we at, Charlie? Seven. Seven. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. You shall know that I, I am the Lord your God, who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And here we go. 3,500 years later, whether they acknowledge him or not, every single year at the Passover, they go through the entire Passover cedar, and they read this entire account, of course, as it's written in the cedar. Some of it is quote out of the Bible, some of it is their traditions. This is the same God that they are worshiping 3,500 years later. And they go through all of the judgments, the judgment of blood and the judgment of this. And they have the youngest child do something. And they have different things they do throughout the entire Passover cedar. Remembering this, just as he said right here. This is, he is establishing that this is the way it's going to be. Whether they acknowledge who he is and what he's done in the person of Jesus is totally irrelevant to the fact that they understand that this is the fulfillment. of. Now, many of them go through these Passover cedars and they go through the Hanukkah and they go through all these different celebrations and they don't believe anything at all. It's like us celebrating Christmas. Oh, holy night. And you, they don't believe anything. So we can't look at the Jewish people and say, how can they be so stupid? They spend, you know, the entire night of Passover doing this thing. And then on Yom Kippur, they all fast and they every Sabbath, they don't work and they do all of these things. And you think, how can they be so stupid? They're voting for this guy that isn't at all aligned with anything moral, right? Now, I'm not giving any, you know, but, and they, they live their lives completely apart from God. They are deceitful in their dealings. They do this, they do that. How can they be so stupid? Well, guess what? Go get the mirror and look in it. And I'm not saying us individually, I'm saying as a people, because we do the same thing. We worship Jesus with our lips throughout the year at different times but our hearts are far from him. And that is exactly all I see in the people of Israel is a teeny little microcosm of the entire world. People that are honoring God, God with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. Okay, So, yes, we look at these things and we look at how could they acknowledge this and not believe this? I, 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 it astounds me because they acknowledge this continuously throughout the year again and again and again and yet they don't believe any of it. If you bring this book to them and you say, here, read this. Oh, I don't read that. That's, they don't want anything to do with the Bible. And yet all year long they're acknowledging it. It's just it's the most fickle thing. But try to step away from them and just look at all of us because we do it all the time. How many posts, does it, who here is on Facebook? I know Kim is. Okay, we've got a couple of us. How many posts did you see God Bless America in the past 24 hours? Everybody. Everybody, whether they are Christians, whether they're atheists, whether whatever, it doesn't make any difference. But as I said in Sunday school last night or yesterday morning, it's not God Bless America. What is it? Bless God, America. Right? Bless. Try saying that and see the bitter faces that you get. I used to have that in big letters across the back of my pickup truck. I had this little Nissan pickup truck. Right after 911, I had a sign that was this big with letters that big, and it said, Bless God, America. And about two people out of 100 would beep and say, Right on, and the rest of them were just absolutely bitter. Bitter that we would dare to say that we need to bless God, America. Can you imagine that? The very people that are saying, God bless America, looking for his blessings, are the ones that are saying, I'm not going to do that. It Does, doesn't make any sense at all. But that's how we live our lives. And that all goes back to this particular passage 
establishing the Jewish people and the promise that is coming in the, the pages to come. We are, we are seeing more of uh, license plates now that says in God. In God we trust. I love when that, because that's somebody that really, really believes it. Right. For somebody to say, in God we trust, that means they're angry that that is being removed from our, so I like to see that. I also like to see, like I have in my car, the, the choose life. But a lot of people just choose life just simply because they adopted a child. But, you know, choose, choose life to me is, it's an important issue for both reasons. Both of my children are adopted, but also because these are human lives and we need to choose life. But remember the one license plate of all of the license plates that got attacked when it came out? Choose life license plate. They, the atheist groups got together and they sued to have that. Every time they see it, prick, prick, prick. Absolutely. That was the only, you know how many license plates Florida has, too. They've got hundreds of them. The Panther, and they've got the Challenger, and they've got this, and they've got hundreds of them. You can pick out any color, any design. Hundreds and hundreds of license plates. One has been sued. One. Choose life. And it's not saying, and what is it? It's not even, it's just simply saying, you know, maybe it's not choose life. What does it say on there? Adopt or choose life. Okay, that's all. But that's the only one that's ever been sued. All the rest of them, oh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tampa Bay Rays, you know, Satan rules, whatever, doesn't matter. Oh, boy, okay. All right, here we go. Sorry to keep diverting, but I've got a lot of stuff in my head today, I guess. I don't know. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give Abraham uh, to Jacob. I'll give it to you for its possession. I am the Lord. Okay, I, I don't see any strings attached to that where if you disobey, I'm going to give it to somebody else. He has the right to take them out of the land as he did two times, but the land wasn't given to anybody else in the process. It was just simply a part of some, you know, the Ottoman Empire or the Roman Empire, but nobody went in there and said, we are now taking over this land as our nation. No, this, this land belongs to Israel. Okay, go ahead. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. So the Lord said to Moses, Go in and tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the people of Israel go out of this land. This land. But Moses said to the Lord, Behold, the people of Israel have not listened to me. How then shall Pharaoh listen to me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. Okay, he's brought that same argument up at the bush. Remember that? I can't speak while well. I'm of uncircumcised lips. He brought the same argument up. And now he's bringing it up again. They're not listening. This is the same God that had him put his hand in there, pull it out, and it's leprous. Put it back in, and it's not. The same God that made the stick this, it made the blood that. Out in the middle of nowhere. It's not like, you know, he had some magic potion that he made in a, a science lab and turned the water into blood. It just happened in the middle of the desert. This guy, is, he's failing to see the bigger picture, right? And it, it, the, I'm not blaming Moses, but I'm saying that this is a picture of all of us. And this guy had God's revelation right in front of him. Right in front of him. Okay? And all we have here, this is, that's not in him. That's right. But we have this here. And if we can, if we can hold to this and we can keep our faith in this, I'm telling you, you know, and he loved Moses. He loved Moses right until the end. It says in the Bible he was humbler than any man. Uh, probably the book of Numbers. Most humble man on earth. Okay? Gave him his own burial site that nobody knows where it is. Now, there's another reason for that as well. But, and yet, he's trying to argue with the Lord. Well, Lord, you know? Just like, what's the guy's name? Uh, Ananias in the book of Acts. Lord. You know, the Lord comes to him. This is the risen Lord, right? Comes to Ananias in a vision. And he says, go, I want you to lay your hands on Paul and uh, a guy named Saul. He's blind. You need to lay your hands on him. He says, but Lord... Is this the risen Lord or is it not the risen Lord, right? The first thing that comes out of his lips is, but Lord, I know what this guy's done. It's like, oh, oh, oh gee, I didn't know that. Okay, don't put your hands on him. You know, it's like, <laughs> ah, it's unbelievable how blind we are to the things of God. It's unbelievable how blind we are to the things of God. And we do it all, I do it all the time. But Lord, and then I have to say, well, no, you did say that, didn't you? You really do know the end from the beginning. Okay, I, I, once again, I'm preaching, but ah, go ahead, please. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a charge about the people of Israel and about Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. The genealogies of Moses and Aaron, these are the heads of their father's houses. 
sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Hannah, Paul, Hershon, Carmi. Okay, before we go on, did you notice how he's given these orders and all of a sudden a genealogy shows up? Just, just suddenly pops up. There's no transition, nothing. Except now what you had in that Bible, that's an insert. That's not actually part of it where it says um, the genealogies of Moses. That's just something they added in. But in a normal Bible, there's... Now why would this, this be that way? We've seen this before. We saw it back at the time of, right before Rebecca. Right, let's go back. Exodus, uh, sorry, Genesis chapter 22. Just to remind you, and this is, when you see something like this, you want to ask, why is this here? We read Genesis 22. Abraham is told to take his son up there, sacrifice his son on the mountain. He says, oh Lord, blah, blah, blah. He goes up there, he lifts his knife, and about to uh, slam, and he says, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, you know, and he says, don't kill your son. And then it says there in verse 14, the Lord will provide. Yes, he will. On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And he says, because you've done this, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to do this. And then in verse 19 it says, so Abraham returned to his young men. They walked back down the hill, and they rose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. All of a sudden, Oh, then it says, Now it came to pass after these things, it was told Abraham, saying, Indeed, Milcah also has born children to your brother Nahor. All of a sudden, it goes from him walking down a hill to something up in the land that he left 70 years ago or 50 years ago. And it says, These are names of the children. Huz, Buzz, Kemuel, Aram, Chesed, Hazo, Pildesh, Yidlaf, Bethuel, Bethuel, begot Rebecca, Milcah, begot Nahor, Abraham's brother, his concubine, whose name was Reuma, also bore Teba, Gaham, Tahash, and Akah. Right? All of a sudden, that's in there. And you say, you know? But as I said, the reason why it's in there is because of the min middle name and all of those names. Rebecca. All of a sudden, you go down just a couple paragraphs and Rebecca becomes the focus of Isaac's life. Right? Isaac is now replacing Abraham. Abraham is going off to his home pretty soon. A Isaac is going to be the new person that we're going to focus on for a while. And who is his wife? Rebecca. Well, if here we are in this account of all these judgments and all these great things he's going to do, and all of a sudden it gives us a genealogy of all of these Israelites. It must be that they are again going to be mentioned very soon and for a reason. And we're going to see that all through after the Exodus, right at the Exodus, after the Exodus, and then into the book of Numbers. These names are going to come up again and again and again. So God is setting the stage now for what's coming. Then he'll go back and get to the judgments again. But these inserts are in here for a reason. And like I said, you got this tree, and off on the side are shoots. And some of the shoots actually pertain to the main trunk, and some of them are, you know, Ishmael, he's kind of an offshoot. We're not going to get back to him except as how he continues to cause trouble to the Israelites throughout the years, even to this day. But some of these things are actually important and they're part of the foundation of the tree itself. So here we are just coming, so we're in the uh, next one, 15. And we've got a lot of names here, so uh, we've got lots of them, but go ahead and read them if you want. Sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Hashem, 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 Okay, and they set off um, Shaul, acknowledging that he is of a Canaanite woman. Okay, so they just kind of put that in there, that he's not really part of... And you're going to see this time from time to time. He's, this is the son of something else or whatever. And it's just kind of acknowledging that this person had a Canaanite wife as well. Not just his wife within the covenant community, but a Canaanite wife as well. Okay, go ahead. Are the names of the sons of Levi according to their generations? Gershon, Kohath, and Mariah. Marari. That's oh, I'm sorry. It, okay. The years of the life of Levi being 137 years. Okay. What is different about Levi than the first three that we read? Reuben, Simeon. Well, they're given how long he did. That's right. Now, why do you think that's in there? I, I said the first three, but it's Reuben, Simeon, and then Levi. He's number three. Well, so, it's going to be that the sons of Levi are going to be the ones who don't have an inheritance. Okay, that's true, but does that have anything to do with the age of Levi? Oh, well, I guess not. Okay. Why do you think that's in there? It's going to overlap with something important. Absolutely. That you are going to be able... Remember I told you that people argue how long they were in the land of Israel? Was it 400 years or was it 200 years or whatever? That is how you're going to be able to tell this. 
okay, because it gives the age of Isaac, it gives the age of Joseph, it gives the age of Levi, 